Scott Schiller for Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and Team G503. He's got an oiler in his hand. So maybe you can guess what this next series of videos is going to be in the restoration of the 1943 Wilson B. We got our rags. It's, it's all going to be about lubrication. In this video, I'm going to start out with this one because it's one of my favorites. I love the smell of this gear oil. And, yeah, some people don't, but you know, this it's kind of cool. If you are into the old Jeep thing, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So we'll start in this video. We're going to fill the fluids on the T84 transmission and the Dana 18 transfer case. Now I've got some tools that I purchased at the big box automotive store that are going to be really helpful. Now I've got the body off. I'm just in the chassis stage here, so it's going to be really easy for me to reach at the drain and fill plugs and the other things I need to get at. But it'll give you a really good idea, and I'll try to show you uh, why I've got the body off. I'll try to show you how I would get at that and get the various components with the tub on, because you can be doing this stuff with the tub on. Let's dive in. I'll show you what tools I started out and how we do it. I've got some tools laid out here on the bench that I'd like to show you, some of the more common things you might have in your garage. Here is an early 1920s adjustable wrench, and you could use something like that, but the more common wrenches that'll be in your garage are like these box end open ends and this adjustable wrench. The adjustable wrench wouldn't be my first choice, but it could get the job done. The box end open end wrenches, sizes 9 16 5 8 and even a 15 millimeter, fit the square end plugs pretty well. I've also got this multi-use socket that will fit square plugged heads also. I've got myself some Permatex thread sealant that I'll be using on the plugs to seal them so they don't leak. I've also got a 3 8 inch drive ratchet and an extension. Also some paint thinner works very well for wiping up and cleaning up any spills and some clean rags. This is a special little tool that I made from an old extension and I'll show you later in the video where this is used. I bought this pump at a big box automotive store because I figured it would make it very easy to transfer fluids. It's a simple hand pump with hoses on either end that you can use as a siphon as well. I'm using an SAE 90 weight mineral gear oil GL1 for the transmission and transfer case. The GL1 mineral oil does not contain additives that are harmful to brass or bronze parts. Specifically, it doesn't contain any sulfa phosphates. Phosphates are wonderful for other gear applications, but in this case with brass and bronze parts, they would shave off small amounts of the synchros and the likes because they are harder than the brass itself. They do not eat or dissolve brass. Clean rags are a wonderful thing. I'm going to tuck an old t-shirt underneath the side of the D84 transmission right by the fill in the drain plug. The transmission and transfer case are fresh rebuilds and I've already removed the drain plug and applied sealant to it. It was easy to get at with the tub removed. If the tub was present, you could use a ratchet and an extension with the special socket that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Remove the fill plug with a 9 16 inch wrench that's found in the center of the T84 transmission. This one is on the driver's side. Let's take a close look at this plug. If you look closely, the drain plug has a definite taper to it. This will be important when we're tightening the plug. On the top of the transmission, unscrew the cap that holds the shifting lever into place. This could be done with the tub in place. Once you get the cap unscrewed, remove the shifting lever and the components. Be careful not to drop any of them on the ground. Now you have a clean, clear opening to add your gear oil. Using a small funnel, insert the opening into the top of the transmission case and pour the gear oil directly out of the container. Be careful not to spill any as you saw that I almost did right there, but I was really close, so it's going to be okay. The transmission only holds three quarters of a quart. While you're pouring, keep a close eye on the opening in the side of the transmission where we remove the fill plug. You want to fill the transmission case until the fluid just starts to come out of the fill hole. I'll move the camera down so you can see exactly what I'm saying. I filled it a little too much, but what we'll do is we'll let this oil seep out of the side, that's what the rag's for, until it's level with the bottom of the opening of the drain plug. While I'm waiting for the fluid to level itself out, I applied a thin coat of the Permatex thread sealant onto the plug. I personally like to use the thread sealant opposed to Teflon tape. It seems that the oil is drained now to level with the bottom of the fill plug, so I'll wipe up any excess oil and then install the fill plug. I found that if you work the plug back and forth a little bit, the sealant will actually work itself better into the threads. Using my 9 16 inch wrench, I will now tighten the fill plug. Once you get to the point where you feel resistance on the plug, and you will feel it, give it a slight pull to tighten it down. Don't force the threads anymore. This could actually crack the case. Remember the taper we saw earlier in the video. Once the plug is sealed and set, it's fine and won't leak. 
Don't over tighten it. I'll use a rag and some mineral spirits to clean up any excess oil and also sealant that's around the plug. Reinstall the shift lever and its components and tighten the cap back down onto the top of the threads of the T84 transmission. You can use a large set of channel lock style pliers to tighten finally on the flat spots of the cap. Moving on to the transfer case, the fill plug is located in the center of the unit on the passenger side. We can remove the plug the same way we did on the transmission. The drain plug for the transfer case is on the bottom side of it. There's a special opening on the skid plate so you can see it easily. The tool I showed you earlier that I made out of an extension fits perfectly into the drain plug. I don't need to remove it because there's no fluids present at the time. The plug has already been sealed. I just wanted to show you the tool that I made for this purpose. Now it's time to try out the new pump. I've got the top hose right into the gallon of the mineral oil and the bottom hose is just poked into the side of the transfer case about an inch because when I start pumping this, I want to be able to see when the fluid comes out. The pump seems to work well. Even though the mineral oil is very thick, it seems to handle it just fine. As I'm filling the transfer case, I'm watching the gallon as the fluid comes out. The transfer case holds approximately one and a half quarts US of gear oil. I've got a rag on the floor to catch any overspill because I'm getting close to the point where the transfer case is going to start seeping the oil. As you see here, I just got it filled. We could have used this pump in the same way on the transmission. As you see here, it's pouring out just a little bit and I've got the fluid level almost level with the threads on the fill opening. We'll come in close here for a shot of exactly what I'm talking about. You can see the fluid just comes to the bottom of the threads on the opening where the fill plug is. I'll wipe off the threads a little bit with a rag just so they're clean as they can be. Apply a thin layer of the thread sealant to the fill plug. You don't need a lot, just enough to cover the threads. We can now reinstall the plug. Remember, just a little back and forth motion will help the sealant to seal and not get forced out of the threads. After you've installed the plug by hand, use a 9 16 inch wrench to tighten. Remember, not to over tighten it. When you start to feel pressure or a stop, so to say, just give it another little quarter turn and everything should be tight and fine. After we're all done, we'll wipe everything up with mineral spirits in a rag and make for a nice clean job. Be sure to dispose of properly any oil soaked or chemically soaked rags. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow along what we've been doing on the 1943 Willis MB, you can subscribe to us here on YouTube at Team G503. Until next time, my friends, keep it lubricated, keep it safe, and happy Jeeping. All parts for the Team G503 43 Willis MB build are provided by Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts.